Dementia board games. Increasingly popular board games are not only a way to have fun. According to scientific studies, such games can bring great benefits, improve intellect, lower the risk of dementia, support education, and also strengthen social bonds. Researchers from the University of Edinburgh looked at a group of more than 1,000 Scottish residents born in 1936 for 68 years. From the age of 11 until the age of 79, the researchers conducted tests on the volunteers' cognitive abilities at several specified intervals. The results were, among others, to information on participants' involvement in various types of analog, non-digital, games. After controlling for a variety of factors such as social background, education, intellectual ability at the start of the study, and health status, they found a clear link between mental ability and gaming. In old age, Supporters of such entertainment could statistically enjoy more efficient cognitive functions. The benefits included slowing down the decline in these functions between the ages of 70 and 79. After adjusting for the results of the study at age 11, and other potential confounding factors, our results indicate that playing games more often slowed lifelong cognitive decline. This supports a principle known as use it or lose it mental exercise in the form of games can help not only to combat the decline in cognitive performance but even to increase it indicate the authors of the publication which appeared in the journals of gerontology researchers at the university of bordeaux followed more than 3675 dementia free volunteers at the time the study began for 20 years to see if playing board games regularly could protect against this type of disorder. As it turned out, a correlation can be noticed. Board games were accompanied by 15%. A decrease in the risk of developing dementia, even after taking into account education, age, gender and other factors that could influence the result. However, the matter is a bit more complicated. The noted relationship lost its significance after taking into account the depression and cognitive abilities of the volunteers at the beginning of the study. Further analysis indicated that board game enthusiasts experienced slower cognitive decline and were less likely to suffer from depression. What does it all mean? Researchers see three possibilities. The first is that people with a tendency to dementia and depression are less likely to reach for this type of entertainment. Another explanation, however, is that gaming promotes healthy aging and delays intellectual decline, depression and dementia. The possible beneficial effect of playing board games on dementia risk may be mediated by reducing cognitive decline and depression in older gamers, the researchers write in a paper published in BMJ. The third option is similar to the second, or maybe games increase the so-called cognitive reserve that allows for longer efficient functioning, even when there are already degenerative processes in the brain in order to form a certain opinion on a subject. Scientists often conduct broader analyzes of research carried out by various teams over a longer period of time. In terms of how board games work, a team from the Japanese University of Musashino undertook such a task. Based on 27 selected studies, the researchers drew several conclusions that may please people who like such games. They shared their research results in the journal, Biopsychosocial Medicine. This systematic review of research has shown that board games and programs that use board games have a positive effect on a variety of outcomes, including learning, cognition, physical activity, anxiety, ADHD symptoms, and Alzheimer's disease severity. Moreover, Board games contributed to the improvement of these parameters.
while enhancing interpersonal interaction and motivation of participants, and promoted the learning process, they continue. One of the studies included in the aforementioned review showed that these types of games can be a great tool for educating children. A group of experts from the University of the Luigi Vanvitelli campaign developed their own game called Caledo, which teaches the principles of healthy eating while having fun. In the 24-week project, over 150 students aged 11 to 14 took part in a 15-day according to the researchers. Thanks to the game, children significantly increased their knowledge of nutrition and even introduced this knowledge to everyday life by increasing the portion of vegetables in the menu. Caledo may be an effective tool for teaching children the principles of a healthy diet. Although further research is needed to test the long-term effects of such an intervention, write the authors of the experiment. The results of which were published in the European Journal of Pediatrics. Board games can also be a good way to improve relationships with other people, for example a partner. This was noticed by researchers from Baylor University, who tested oxytocin levels in 20 couples living together during two different activities. The description and results of these studies were published in the Journal of Marriage and Family. Volunteers took part in art classes or just played board games. The level of the love hormone oxytocin increased the most during artistic activities, but it was also increased by games. While observing the couples, however, the researchers noticed some specific elements of gaming or other activities that could have influenced the results. They report that, oxytocin is released during joint recreational activities undertaken by couples. Some types of activities may contribute to a greater release of oxytocin than others. Key factors may include touch, novelty and gender. Meanwhile, the selection of board games is so large that probably everyone interested will find more than one item for themselves. It's definitely worth a try. An ultra-precise prosthetic hand controlled by the mind. Researchers at the University of Michigan have developed an extremely precise prosthetic hand so efficient that it can be used to fasten shirt buttons. The work of scientists heralds a new generation of mind-controlled prosthetics and gives amputees the ability to better operate bionic limbs. A physically fit person performs his daily activities effortlessly and without thinking about the network of nerves needed to move his thumbs, fingers or hands. A method developed by researchers from the University of Michigan allows you to continue to use this blissful unconsciousness, even when someone has lost a limb. All it takes is a learning algorithm and some grafted muscles. The new technology, described in an article published in the journal Science Translational Medicine, appears to be more effective than previous attempts to combine brain activity with prosthetic limb movement. Researchers have achieved this through a new procedure that allows it to amplify nerve signals and better communicate with the bionic hand. The new method involves splitting the nerve bundles into smaller fibers that allow for more precise control and amplification of the signals passing through the nerves. The approach involves transplanting a small piece of thigh muscle and using machine learning algorithms borrowed from brain-computer interfaces. It acts as a megaphone for severed nerves allowing participants to perform precise movements such as picking up a small object or moving a zipper. This is the biggest advance in motor control in amputees in many years, said Paul Cederner, one of the paper's authors.
We have developed a technique that allows precise and intuitive finger control of prosthetic devices using the remaining nerves in the patient's limb. As a result, we were able to provide the most advanced prosthetic control the world has ever seen. As the scientists admitted, the control of the prosthesis is intuitive and does not require learning. Works right away. You can make a prosthetic hand do a lot of things, but that doesn't mean the person is intuitively controlling it. The difference is that on the first try, it works just by thinking about it, and that's our approach, said Cindy Chestek, co-author of the study. Our approach worked on the first try. Participants in the experiments did not have to study. All learning takes place in our algorithms. This is what sets us apart from other approaches. Joe Hamilton, who lost his arm in a fireworks accident in 2013, said the technique offered by scientists at the University of Michigan made him feel like he had his arm back. You can do everything you can with a real hand with this hand. It brings back a sense of normalcy, Hamilton said. One of the biggest hurdles in mind-controlled prosthetics is getting a strong and stable neural signal to feed a bionic limb. Some research groups are targeting the primary source, the brain. This is necessary when working with paralyzed people. But on the other hand, it is invasive and high risk. The Michigan team came up with a completely different approach. Muscles taken from the thigh were wrapped around nerve endings in the arms of the participants in the experiment. In this way, damaged nerves received new tissue to which they could attach. The researchers noted that such a treatment prevents the formation of new aromas and gives the nerves the already mentioned megaphone, i.e. it strengthens nerve signals. During the experiments, two patients had muscle graft electrodes implanted, and these were able to record nerve signals and transmit them to the prosthetic limb in real time. In this case, the muscle acts as a biological amplifier and makes the tension 10 to 100 times higher. I think it's safe to say that these are the largest neural signals ever recorded in a human, Chestek said. With other approaches, you can get 5 or even 50 microvolts. Using a biological amplifier, we saw the first millivolt signals. This opens up completely new possibilities for people using an upper limb prosthesis, she added. And that means more accurate movements. The team of scientists acknowledged that the current results are the result of 12 years of work. The discovery of how to amplify neural signals will have far-reaching implications for prosthetics. We hope that one day it will become widely available. This technique is applicable to virtually any amputated body part, she emphasized.